right, so that's the seal in. It's nice and level all around. Flange, nut, done. Okay, so I got the torque wrench. I'm going to just set this thing on 14 newton meter now, just as a pre torque, and I'll pump it up more. Alright, so that's all torqued up now. I gave the final torque uh, one 14 newton meter, and obviously, she's a little bit more tight now than what she was because we have now the resistance of the, the seals on this flange now. Welcome back to the channel guys and to another video. I hope you guys are enjoying the series thus far and at least taking something from it. Thank you for everybody that's been subscribing to the channel thus far. In uh, this video I'll be showing you the, the gear clearances as I mentioned in the previous video. So I'll be going onto the whiteboard explaining the different tooth contacts and how the the pinion or ring gear must move around in the casing to achieve the proper tooth contact. And also I'll just put a short, a couple of short clips in of me machining the carrier spaces, you know, the side spaces on the side. It's worthwhile noting that um, I machined the spaces 7.5 millimeter and that I fitted to the carrier during the trial, during the trial and fit periods, which I which I mentioned that I did not show you guys. Um, it was determined during that process that it had to be 7.2 millimeter and 6.8. So I obviously put the spaces back into the lathe and machine the one down to 6.8. I took obviously 0.2 off because they were standard seven millimeter thick. And the one that I machined 7.5, I machined off um, 0.3 of that to get to 7.2. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, get your popcorn. So this is the one that I made. Okay, so that is all assembled now. That's all talked up, talked up, everything's talked up. I've got a good, a good, good backlash here. Then we can hear it. That's perfect backlash. I already checked it out. So yeah, I'm just going to clean up the cover with a gasket on, and then she'll be good to go. All right. So at this stage, I'm going to stop uh, showing you the assembly, and I'll be moving to the whiteboard to explain the tooth contact. Uh, patterns and also I'll include I'll just put in a still pic now of the dial gauges how I set up the dial gauge to get the backlash clearance I obviously did, didn't show you guys that but I'll put that still pick in okay and now off to the whiteboard Okay guys, so you must please excuse my my uh, drawings as I'm not an artist as per se. So I'm going to be drawing the um, the gear. Hope you guys get the get an idea of of this. Okay, so that is kind of the the crown wheel that I'm trying to draw. 
Okay, then I'll just draw the the other section here, like um, let's say. Okay, no, let's let's do it next door here. Let's do it next door. Let's say uh, this is the crown wheel, and this is the pinion. Okay, that gears run like that, and they do whatever they. Okay, so we got our two, our crown wheel and crown wheel and pinion. Okay, so ideally a tooth contact, you want a tooth contact like in this area here. That would be ideally. When I put my, when I put my diff together, I got a tooth contact more or less here. And obviously it will go a little bit up there and stuff, but this is the ideal tooth contact that you should achieve when assembling it. And and like I said, I got mine quite close to it. And in my case, the, this area here, you know, I, put, I had to put a shim in here. This year was 0 0.5 millimeter shim, which actually pushed, which actually pushed the pinion closer. That was during the trial and error um, sections. And um, I actually forgot to draw something here. And um, like I'm just talking about my in my instance. I mean, this was the this let's call this the and the bearings were sitting here. Okay, and um, I had to put in here a uh, seven point two millimeter, and in here behind this bearing, six point eight. So this is how my setup is right now: seven point two there, six point eight there, zero point five. Okay, so regardless, that is my setup. But as far as tooth contact go, this is how it must be, and whatever your shims are here or whatever shims is determined to to get that type of tooth pattern during a trial and error per, um, phases that shims must be fitted there okay the next one i will actually show now i'll start showing the tooth patterns that's not ideal okay so like i said earlier on the ideal tooth pattern would be nice and center there so when you assemble your crown and pinion and you find that the tooth pattern is quite deep down, let's say down here, let's say your tooth pattern is like deep down here, like below the center, below like the center of, of here, like ideally it would be there. Let's say it's more to the three quarter of the tooth width here. Let's say it's all down here. Then... You, you must shim your pinion up, okay? And you must shim your, and your crown wheel must move that way. In other words, whatever shim you have this side here must be increased. Whatever shim you have this side here must be decreased. And if you have a shim in here, whether it be whatever, 0.5, 1 millimeter, whatever, that must be reduced to either nothing or if it's one millimeter, it reduces to 0.5 or whatever. So, so if you have a shim in behind this outer race of this bearing that sits here, that must be made less, that must be minimized. So like I said, if, you have, if your tooth pattern is down here, then your crown wheel must move up by decreasing the th shim thickness there, increasing this size, decreasing that size. Okay, the next one is if your tooth contact is up here, more in the quarter range or more to the the tip of the of the tooth which was actually in my case if you can recall when i tried showing you the tooth contact with the you know so mine was up here right in a case like this your crown wheel must come this way and that is why I actually put in a 0 0.5 gasket there, spacer, shim, if you can recall. And, I'm oh, sorry, your pinion, I think I said, said crown wheel, your pinion must come this way. And your crown wheel 
must go that way, must move away. And if you can recall, there was a 7 mil year and I made it 6.8. I shifted my crown wheel that way. And if you also, if you can recall, this side in my instance was 7 millimeter and I made mine 7.2. So I actually moved my crown wheel that way in order to eliminate that incorrect tooth pattern. So with a tooth pattern like that, your crown wheel comes deeper by putting in a shim. Ach, your pinion comes deeper by putting in your shim. And your crown wheel must move in that direction, guys. Okay, so the next one is if you have only contact in this area here. If you have only that contact in this area here of the crown wheel and not anywhere else, if your contact area is more this area here, then your crown wheel must actually move in that direction. You don't do anything much to your pinion, whatever shim you have in there, you leave that shim in there. You move your crown wheel this way and, and start trialing to try to shift this to where it must be. But if your tooth contact is like that, your crown wheel basically moves that way. Okay, so when it was here, that you kind of call um, like a toe contact. So opposite to that would be contact up here. That you, be, that you call like heel too much heel contact. And then that's obviously just opposite to the previous one. Your crown wheel, you shift in that way. So it will go in deeper and make deeper contact here. Because it's obviously too much in there. So you shift in your crown wheel in to make deeper contact there. But like I said, it's all a trial and error. It's all a trial and error thing, guys. But basically that means that very seldom we'll get a toe and heel situation if you're you know, if you start off here, you'll probably get a, a more greater contact area there. But this is this, this is where you you must play around with it. And obviously, like the experienced guys, guys that work every day with these things, they'll know exactly what to do. But anyway, that's my uh, my take on this. As far as the backlash goes, it will vary on the depending on the size of the of the crown wheel. There's a whole formula for this, guys, and I'm not really going to go into that, into the, the formula to actually work out the backlash, the, the ideal backlash for the size of the gears and stuff like that. Um, there's a rule of thumb, basically, with most um, mechanics, and this is my, my personal take of this. Some, some might disagree, but 0 0.3 millimeter backlash is kind of the ideal one, because if you work out the formula, depending on the size of the of your gears it can range from 0.2 up to 0.5 up to half a millimeter backlash so generally 0.3 is a nice a nice medium for backlash okay so that's enough about backlash guys i hope you found it somewhat interesting and and uh, informative don't forget to like subscribe comment share the video tell your friends about it let's grow this channel Thanks for everybody once again that has subscribed already. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers for now.